Hello, learners. I hope you're doing fine. Stay safe, stay home, keep your masks on. This is Drusella from Trinity College in Abingo. I want to take you through history today. Last time we looked at the long distance trade, we defined the trade, we looked at the organization, we saw the factors that led to the growth of the trade, and we looked at the role played by the different African societies in this trade. So today our major concern is going to be the causes or the reasons for the decline of this trade. And one of the major reasons was the death of prominent leaders. Like we had said earlier, in this trade, the people that organized the caravans, that made the trade negotiations, the ones that would identify the potential slave traders or the slaves to carry the commodities were the leaders like Tipu Tipu, who was at Ujiji, we had uh, Mirambo of the Nyamwezi, we had Motesa one of Uganda, Saidi Saidi at the coast in Zanzibar. This played a very big role in as far as organizing the trade was concerned. But by the 19th century, the end of it, in the 1840s, 1850s, most of these leaders had died. And this brought a very big vacuum in the trade. So there was no one to organize, negotiate, and make different trade transactions anymore. And that led to the decline of the trades. Then the trade items that were highly demanded also got exhausted. This was because of the increasing demand. The demand for these interior goods by the Arab people had become too much, and they kept killing the elephants for ivory. The gold from the Motapa kingdom had been exhausted, and the slaves, the continuous taking over the slaves from the interior to the coast, the raids had depopulated the entire eastern interior. So that the trades, the items that were demanded for in the trade got exhausted. So the traders were left with no alternative item to demand for, and that also led to the decline of the trade. Then the poor transport. With poor transport, you can remember, or if you're to, by the 18th century, East Africa, especially the interior, lacked well-developed transport routes. And most of these items were bought from areas that were remote. For example, the route from Bagamoyo through uh, the the central Tanzania and then to Ujiji, it was a remote area, it was a remote road, so it was very hard to access some of those areas because of the poor transport. That is why Africans devised a way of entering or moving into the different parts by using the small footpaths that came to be known as the caravan route. So those routes are the ones that the Europeans, the Arabs, the foreigners followed as they penetrated the interior, but they're not fully developed. Then the coming of missionaries. When missionaries came in by the 19th century, they looked at the idea of trading, exchanging human beings for mere gold, for mere mirrors, as very inhuman. They looked at, they defined slave trade as an evil trade. So when they came into the interior and found that trade going on, Africans selling off fellow Africans, they really decampaigned it through their different preachings, through the writings, and that led to the decline of the trade. Then the abolition of slave trade. By 1922, the campaigns against the trade had become very pronounced, especially in the interior of East Africa. So by the, 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 the end of the 19th century and with the Industrial Revolution in Europe, slaves were no longer highly demanded. And that saw the abolition of the slave trade. And remember, the slaves were the ones being used to carry the commodities from the interior to the coast. So with the abolition of slave trade, there was no more means of transport. So it rendered the slave the trade very null and void. Then the construction of the railway line. After abolishing slave trade, there was no means of transport. So the only alternative the whites had to bring in was the railway line. And it was very cheap, and it, would, it was faster. So, the construction of the railway line made the use of slaves very useless. They were left with nothing to do anymore. And that also led to the decline of the trade. So those people that were demanding for slaves could no longer use the slaves as a transport means because now we had the railway 
line. Then the Ngoni invasion. When you talk of the Ngoni invasion, you're talking about the period of 1840 when the Ngoni were moving away from South Africa, escaping from Shaka's tyrannic rule. When they came into East Africa, they used the route between Lake Malawi and Lake Tanganyika. That was under the leadership of Zwangendava. When they entered central on the central Tanzania, after the death of Zwangendava, the Angoni group split into two. We had the Masekongoni that went back to the south, and then the Tutangoni. The Tutangoni are the ones that really disrupted the central route because as they moved towards Nyamwezi land through Ujiji, and this is a central route, it was the busiest route. It diverted the minds of the traders from trading to now protecting themselves against the Angoni. Remember the Angoni were warlike in nature. So wherever they would go, they would simply impose themselves as the new occupants. So it was a very big disruption to the trade. Then the introduction of legitimate trade. You would wonder what legitimate trade is. This trade was introduced by the foreigners, by the Europeans, especially the British, the advocators of anti-slave trade. So they came up with the idea of trading in natural resources. They encouraged Africans to grow cash crops, to carry out mining and exchange the minerals. So with the introduction of legitimate trade as an alternative trade from slave trade also led to the decline of the long distance trade because during the long distance trade, the item demanded was slaves. So when the slave trade had been abolished and the introduction of legitimate trade, People saw themselves now trying to carry out cash crop growing to deviate from slave trade. Then the tropical diseases. Initially, the Europeans didn't want to penetrate the interior in fear of tropical diseases. And indeed, it was true. Most of these traders succumbed to malaria, to, uh, sleeping sickness, dysentery, and that scared others from entering into them. Syria, and that only resulted into the decline of the trade. That's stiff competition. When I talk of stiff competition, uh, basing on the lucrative nature of the trade, the Akamba, the Chaga, the Yao, the Nyamwezi ended up producing familiar commodities. So they now had to struggle for markets. So with time, the Akamba and the Chaga were out competed because we saw the Arabs coming into the interior. Africans producing similar products. So the stiffness of the, the, the trend also made Africans to rebel against one another. And that also became a problem, hence resulting into the decline of the trend. Then with time, with the introduction of guns, because the Europeans would bring in guns and then the Africans would offer, the slaves would offer the ivory, so with the increased number of the, uh, guns in the interior, there was insecurity. Insecurity, how? Even the weaker tribes, the weaker societies were now able to defend themselves. Africans started using these guns as a way of fighting to incite violence. So the interior became very insecure and that made most of these traders, especially the foreigners, to fear penetrating the interior. And that also led to the decline of the trade. And then to make it uh, worse, we saw the hostile tribes. When I talk of hostility of tribes, you understand, you know, the prominent Masai and the Nandi. Now, these ones constantly attacked the traders. They would steal the traders' commodities. They would attack the major trade routes. No wonder the northern route, with time, the one that was controlled by the Akamba, was very much affected by the Masai and the Nandi hostilities. And that scared the foreigners from using that road. And that also led to the decline of the trade. As if that was not enough, these foreigners, these traders, both in the interior and at the coast, were constantly attacked by wild animals. Some of these trade routes were going through thick forests. And thick forests that had wild animals, like the lions at Savo, the leopards, the huge snakes, these very much scared away the traders, and most of them chose to remain at the coast. And this led to the decline of the trade. Then the heavy taxes that were imposed on the traders. Now, when Mirambo was trying to establish and expand his empire, and being that 
the Nyamwezi, he was the leader of the Nyamwezi, and the Nyamwezi were the major controllers of the busiest central route. He embarked on a policy of taxing the foreigners, the traders, the merchants that were using the central route. So he heavily taxed them, and this made most of these people to lose interest because on top of having to pay the taxes in the interior, some of them would be would be entering the interior after getting loans from the Indian banyans. So on top of that, they had to pay taxes as they used the central route because that is where the goods they wanted were got from. So it disparaged most of these traders. When I talk of heavy taxes, this was basically uh, known to be done by Mirambo, the Nyamwezi chief. The language barrier, one would wonder, how did these foreigners, be, how were they able to communicate with the interior tribes? They don't know the Kiswahili language, they don't know the local languages. So, and yet the, means, the major means of lang uh, communication, the major language by then was Kiswahili. So those that didn't know Kiswahili were helped by interpreters. But then we saw in the organization that with time, these interpreters became cunning. And they would misinterpret or interpret according to their own interests. So the language barrier where traders in most cases, especially the foreigners, could not effectively communicate with the people who had the, the goods they wanted also became a problem, and most of them got discouraged, resulting into the decline of the trade. And as time went on, the Banyans, we say the Indian Banyans were the ones at the cost, the ones offering loans to these Arabs so that they come into the interior and then get the goods. But with time, the Banyans lost. They lost it because constantly, they would, oftentimes, they would offer uh, loans to the Arabs. As the Arabs come into the interior, some would succumb to the tropical diseases, others would be killed in the intertribal wars, and other Arabs would never pay back. They would simply stay into the interior and not, never go back to the coast. So the Banyans realized that they were making losses in the long run, so they decided to withdraw from the trade. And that was also a very big blow because they were the ones offering money to the Arab traders. Then, as the Arabs entered the interior, because the major reason for coming was to penetrate, rather to carry out the trade. But with time, they also had the desire to control most of these trade items. They wanted to control the societies that had the highly demanded items. And before we know it, they, were, they wanted to politically involve themselves. And this, their political involvement in the African internal affairs became a very big threat to some of these African chiefs and leaders. So it's resulted in two, two groups of people in, in the interior. We had the anti-Arabs and the pro-Arabs. So when I talk of anti-Arabs, I mean those that did not like the Arabs being in the interior, and then we had those that liked to trade with the Arabs. So it created some tension in the interior. And we see later that Mirambo, for example, the leader of the Nyamwezi, was anti-Arab. That is why he constantly taxed them highly, he organized for people to attack the caravans that were led by the Arabs. So that made the traders to stay at the coast. Then the intertribal wars, I think we looked at that. The intertribal wars, these are the wars that were in the interior. They made the interior very insecure, so it threatened or scared away the traders from penetrating the interior. So I would conclude there and say that the reasons, most of these reasons we've looked at are political, social, and economic. But I'm going to give you an assignment of food for thought. Of all the reasons we've looked at, what do you think stands out most? As I mentioned earlier, for me, what stood out most for me was the, the death of the prominent leaders, because these leaders knew who to go to, they would make the trade transactions, they would organize the caravans, they would pick on their subjects that were apparently capable of carrying the commodities. But with their death, we see it as a very big blow to the trade. So, food for thought, go back and look through those reasons for the decline of this trade. You could add more or for more information. Again, you should follow the link below. Thank you very much for listening. Have a good day. Please keep safe. Stay home.